cycling folks ah the sun is blazing uh, <clears throat> Bit of a shelf here. Yeah. So, first of all, good morning. Where are my manners? Uh, I'm doing a very short hop over the next like one hour or so uh, because, as usual, I've got a cunning plan. Now, what I'm it just all takes so long to explain and it's so trivial, but let me lay it on you. Um, the boat is getting blacked, I think, middle of July. If, well, I don't think, I know. Um, and there are spots of rust along the upper hull, so there will be along under the water line as well. And that's because it's been three years instead of two, the rust is starting to show. So, what I've done is I've got one of those grinder blades with flappy sandpaper to sort of shift the rust now it's not very good because it smears the black and it's a bit messy but it sort of works so I've done this side of the boat over the last couple of days um, you know getting rid of all the sort of visible rust and everything so we're down to bare metal now mixed with black and it's all a bit of a mess but it's better than rust because I don't want to black over rust don't want to do that I want to you know you're paying one and a half grand it's two pack epoxy and we'll go into that there'll be a I'll try and do a video about it, my sanity holds through the process. Uh, so I'm going to do a video about that. But anyway, so this is sort of prep. So, so I've done this side of the boat, right? Got to do this side. That's the canal side. Oh dear, how am I going to do it? Simple, I'm going to turn the boat around. Nearest point I can turn the boat around is uh, about a mile away. So it's a mile each way. It's uh, it's still morning. Is it even 11 o'clock? Quarter to 12. So, bit of a method in the madness, as usual. Just cunning as a fox. Um, I'm making the turn and coming back to this spot because there's a stone bank, which is brilliant for, you know, if you want to bend down, sit down, kneel down, whatever, to get the um, sanding done. So, uh, so, uh, so I'm coming back here because of the stone bank and there's, there's uh, rings so it's dead easy to uh, tie up, you know, it's all a double. And uh, that is the plan. One mile, turn the boat round, come back and uh, in the meantime the batteries are recharging. It's a cordless grinder I've got. So the batteries are recharging so it'll work out perfectly in fact, I may even squeeze in a quick trip to town. Well, a second, because I've got two batteries. Is this a boat? Bit of a, it's a bit of a wrong time of day to travel, sadly. Because it's a popular time of day. You know, late morning. Late morning, early to mid-afternoon, very popular. That's when you tend to see, I feel, the largest number of boats. Anyway, no one coming. It's unsafe. Let's just check this out. Uh, so, uh, I'm going very slowly, by the way. Um, just about tick over. I'm going to stick a couple of extra revs on as I'm coming up to this tunnel. Sorry, bridge hole. Forward view. There are a few stretches of mooring drowned here. Um, this, I think, is the village of Marston. There's not really much there. There's an old salt works, the Lion Salt Works. Um, and there's the old salt barge pub just there, which is quite a nice place, it must be said. Um, And they've got a little museum, sorry, I'm not just let me check. Yeah, they've got a little sort of museum here. I've not been in that, but uh, because, you know, a museum about salt mines, it's just, I'm not feeling it. You know, call me a, call me a Philistine if you will. But it's not the museum for me. Right, 
So, I'm trying to get this stand positioned while steering. I struggled with this. I, I, I'm sure this is why I had so many bumps on the Flying Gotham last winter. Was because it was I was starting to use this camera, and uh, well, I wasn't sure which one worked, which one didn't. So finding my feet as a creator, um, i.e., faffing around uh, with with phone cameras, and. Um, while I was faffing around, repositioning, pointing it at things, I kept on bumping into um, bridge holes. So uh, I've noticed as I've gotten used to just sort of holding the camera, I've gotten a second, a sort of a, I was going to say a sixth sense. That implies that an invisible thing, <laughs> not a sixth sense, but a sort of, I've gotten a bit more alert, a bit more wary. And I'm always keeping half an eye open on where I'm going. It shouldn't be rocket science, should it? These are some moorings here, Ollershaw Lane. So these are leisure moorings. Um, so the agreement here is you can keep your boat here. Mooring agreement holders only. So you need to have an agreement with CRT, but there are rings, which is nice. So you'll pay to keep your boat here on a leisure basis. I would hazard a guess there's one or two who spend a bit more time than just leisure on the boats because it's hard to define isn't it like you might be a retiree who wants to spend six months of the year on the boat when does it become residential when it's literally 24 7 365 is that when it's residential you know anyway there doesn't seem to be any trouble about it <clears throat> uh, nobody seems to uh, give them any grief which is good because you wouldn't want them to there's a boat coming towards me in the distance so I'm just going to get past these moored boats and then we've got bags of room so it's now drama oh, I've done it again sorry I'll, I'll watch out for that it slipped out um, I mean you know the now drama thing slipped out um, so I'm gonna just Concentrate on dodging this boat up ahead, and uh, I can get a few reds on now. Anyway, the genius of the, the plan, right? I, I was, I, I sort of forgot about how genius the plan was. The genius of the plan is that um, I will be getting back here early afternoon, so there'll still be a space. Now, for some reason, there's loads of spaces there. When I first arrived, there was only one. And I considered myself sort of lucky to have gotten it. But uh, now, everyone's buggered off and there's loads. Morning. I gave that guy uh, plenty of space because there's bushes on his side. Uh, I wonder if he took a little bit more space than I was expecting, but it's always difficult when you look back and you look at the view as he saw it, those trees really do stick out, I can imagine he was a bit wary of them, he's kind of a shiny boater, and they do like, and I understand it, they do like to keep their paintwork and my day, you know, fair play, we all I sound like I'm being supercilious we all like to, nobody likes to get the paint scratched, and stuff, we're not but there are some who really, sort of, really don't like it. Now this is unfortunate because I'm passing a boat and what I've just noticed is where we're going to pass, there's a tree sticking out. So our space is limited. And by the way, there are moorings here. There are moorings here, there's mooring rings here. It's under the bank. I didn't know there were moorings here. That's worth knowing. On rings as well. But it's under the trees, sorry. Under the bank. There are trees close to the bank is where I'm, the sort of expression I was groping towards there, feebly. Um, and uh, so it's not ideal.
morning. Right, so, oh, and important news, because um, it's now, it's, is it 8th of June or something, 8th, 9th of June? It's, it's, you know, we're more than a week into June. Things are properly warming up. The sun is properly, I, I should have a sun hat on, really. I've got a sun hat, I've got a brilliant sun hat. But anyway, um, because of that, the, my ancient foe, has awoken, I feel. The dreaded horsefly. And then um, I have therefore resurrected the ancient weapon that has lain dormant for the best part of a year. And if any show themselves, that's a the trouble though, they don't bloody show themselves, they're sneaky. Arr! Anyway, I'm not gonna get myself worked up about how much I hate horseflies. We all know that. Um what I will do is I'll just check the map because uh, we're probably not far away. Um, we are probably not far away. So it's June. A few boats have gone past this morning. There's two more in quick succession. Um, so it's sort of busy. It's not busy. Is it? I always think back to the Langotlin in the summer of '21. When you know the word busy comes into the conversation because um, that was insane I mean it felt like it was insane I'm sure there's busy just as busy places around the country but the number of boats that would pass in high summer worst thing about it though they didn't just pass they flew past right here's another thing right so not the sign as interesting as that is or indeed this bridge but here is another stretch with some moorings on it I think it's arm coat but it could be rings I don't like this spot quite as much in terms of getting into town it's okay but I don't think it's habit it, it's inhabited to the same extent there are factories behind those trees there's waste ground there and then some industrial units and I think there's like a cottage or two there. So there, there's not a lot of people around here. And also, it's not that pleasant. A massive bank of reeds here, by the way. There's there's very little space. Well, two boats could squeeze past each other, but, uh, you know. Be a tad... Uh, you'd have to be a tad careful. So there, are, I think there are rings here. So this this also... If I was ever stuck for a morning spot, like the place I'm, I'm at now, or I'm going back to, if that was ever full, look, there's a ring there. <coughs> what you really want is arm coat. That's the only ring I've seen. And there's um, a heron going about its deadly work. There's something, there's a ring there. Right, okay, so, yeah, there are rings here. There are rings. Um, Yeah, there's another one. Okay, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied that there are rings and I could, this is a valid, usable spot. The only real problem being axe murderers because there's two, well, there's two houses there. So I think my uh, screens could be heard. But um, what the hell is that? That's been the same since I was here 18 months ago. It looks like it was going to be a storage unit, or... I don't know, was it going to be a car park? Whatever it was, they appear to have stopped halfway. Um, now, what, what, what's interesting, I've seen herons do this, is as your boat progresses, they will take off and they will fly ahead of the boat and wait there. It's almost like they're waiting for fish to be scared towards you. They're scared away from the boat. They, those beeps are absolutely deadly to small animals, honestly. But that, I was watching some YouTube videos, which is never a thing you should do about predators, because you'll always just come away hating them. But they take ducklings. I saw one of those herons, and I'd love to know if they do it or not. I saw one standing next to a gang of ducks 
uh, how weird it was. I think it might have been a towards early winter. It was on the Langoffwood and um, big gang of ducks. Sorry, the map. I need the map. Big gang of ducks and uh, this heron just stood next to him. Right, okay. So my turning point is a quarter of a mile, and there's a boat moored up there. It's getting to the stage, the weather, where if it stays like this and it's like June, you're like, well, it is June. You're going to have to start looking for shade. At the moment, I'm not because I'm doing the work on the side of the boat. But it's going to get that hot. So you're going to have to be deliberately looking for trees. And just lose your solar, at least for part of the day because it becomes impossible. I, I parked at New Martin in the summer of 21 and it's wide open and the sun was on the boat all day long from sort of 5 a.m. or whatever it was and it got really warm, it was crazy hot. Uh, it's just ridiculous. I just had to move the boat. I couldn't, I just couldn't be inside the boat in those sorts of temperatures. It was too much for me. Right, so my turning point is coming up, but yeah, just to finish that point about the heron, I saw a heron, right, and it was in that almost predatory stance that they take where they stare, but they're stock still, and they stare at the prey, and then they, they strike with their, you know, great speed, and, um, but it was looking at a gang of ducks, and I'm thinking, could it be, it's early winter, it's struggling for prey, and it's going to try and kill one of these ducks. It seemed a bit ambitious, but the beaks are just deadly weapons. And, uh, morning. Hi, you wouldn't put it past them. Right, okay. We've got a bridge hole. Who's closest? I think I'm closest, aren't I, know. I think this one was like 50-50. I'll just show you on the phone camera. This one was about 50-50. Uh, but I felt like I was maybe a tad closer. So I thought I'll go for this one. I hope I haven't been rude in doing that. Thanks guys! Morning ladies! It's a bit much for me today! <laughs> Cheers guys! Thank you! So... Oh, listen guys! So Red's back on, and up ahead there's a turning point. Now I remember this turning point from the last time I was here. I went on a cruise, it was a really cold day, it was snowing. My old friend and work, ex-work colleague, visited the boat for an afternoon, just for a short cruise, a couple of hours. You know, the one who's a waterways ex, uh, expert, sorry, waterways, um, a keen enthusiast. <coughs> and. Um, we came this way, because I was down at Sanderton, we came this way, and, uh, right, okay, a couple of things are happening, while I'm looking at the map, the boat's going towards the bank, so that's no good, let's fix that, second thing is, the map's not responding, because it's this sort of slightly crappy old phone, so I've got to reload the app, And I had the same problem when we were, colleague was here, of trying to guess where the winding hole was. Because I looked at the map and I thought, it looks like we're right on top of it. And it looks like there is one. Look. 
if you look here it looks like that could be a winding home but I don't think it is I think it's that little thing just up ahead another 50 yards but I really need to pay attention here because I miss it it's miles to the next one but it's saying 300 feet 300 feet right I've got to presume that the sat nav is right and that neither of these are the winding hole because look there's a slight indentation here and I wondered if that might be it or that might be it that looks really look like it but I don't think it is so then there's a lady with this boat stood out on the bank sorry sat out on the bank so the winding hole is still a tad further on but it cannot be far 200 feet so it must be just around this next bend I, I remember I struggled to to find it because it, I had a couple of false alarms when I was here last time <laughs> Morning which is the winding hole here? Right, just literally here? Yeah. Doesn't look like it, does it? Yeah. The secret winding hole? Brilliant. Right, okay guys, I would love to sort of show you some of the action here. But, I can't do it. I've balls this up. I've really balls this up. So what I'm going to do is try and make up for my mistake by doing a more violent turn. So, three, and then coming backwards. Okay, well I hit the bank and then came backwards. But it sort of counts. mistake of turning too late the mistake I always make you can see so I'm turning against the corner of the elbow thing rather than the hole itself which is there but anyway I'm making a turn so it's I mean it's garbage boat handling but it's not as bad as I usually am okay two three and reverse always give it a pause between forward and reverse so I wish I'd known that when I first got the boat I spent like a year slamming it backwards and forwards without a care in the world doing you know if I was in a bit of trouble which I often was in the early days I mean then, you know more recent days I've had a few scrapes to be fair um, but you know yeah I was all over the place on the River Neen and uh, I wish I'd known the damage I probably did to that gearbox is just horrendous. Right, so before I get too close to the bank, I'm going to go back into forward gear. It's not some of these winding holes, I've got to be honest, right? This is where I admire. It's the one time when I'm glad I've got a 50 foot boat. The one time. The rest of the time, I'm wishing it was 57 give me some extra storage space I'm just going to go backwards one more time now if you get this right you should really do this in a single go sorry this is this is the um, horse fly repellent 
horse flying bug repellent. It's um, the second part of my strategy. The second part of my um, survival strategy for the bugs. Right, now I can bring the boat round and I've got a bloody big bee. Oh, he's gone. Now I can bring the boat round. This is the final part of the turn. There we go. So now let's cut the revs down a bit. We don't need to, we don't need any speed. And uh, since those two boats came from this direction, or two or three, whatever it's been, there've been no others. And uh, so I should, there's the winding hole, some kind of educational establishment, I believe. Um, it's, it sort of looks it, doesn't it? Um, anyway, the, the, the cunningness of the plan is sort of the fact that I'll get back to this mooring spot so early in the day. I'll, I should, I say definitely, never say definitely, there's some wood. I should get a mooring spot and start doing this side of the boat. So next two days I'll finish this side, then I'll move on. That is the plan. I've got to shush because this one is there. And I don't come up like a weirdo. I hope you didn't, uh, you didn't notice that, did you at all? <laughs> it wasn't 100% perfect, that one. <laughs> And it's 50 foot as well, I've got no excuse, honestly. But uh, anyway, take care. So, uh, she's a nice, uh, nice woman there, sat out on the towpath. So, now she's on pins there, and um, it is a lovely quiet section of canal. Not worried about sex murders, just a woman mental, what's going on? sat out and there is no one here seriously no joking there is no there's no there's no houses here she is on her own um, she is so on her own here but uh, you know we're not all we're not all scaredy cats like me <laughs> we let's be honest about it some of us are normal but um, there is a boat, there is a boat sort of just within sight under the bridge up ahead. So there's that, you know, yeah, of, a, of an evening, of a still night, of a windy night, you wouldn't, I sound like I'm, I know all the tricks of the bloody axe murder trade, don't I? On a windy night, you can't hear screams from X, Y, Z away. Uh, I'm going to have people worried that I'm, I'm the, uh, you know, me doth protest too much or whatever it is. I haven't got the stamina, to be honest, or the guts. Um, <laughs> which is probably watching going, no shit. But uh, anyway, um, I, I, I said I wasn't going to even discuss the topic anymore, didn't I? I like even jokingly, so let's let's bury the hatches on the axe murdering topic. Sorry, sorry. I, uh, well, it was too good to miss. It was too bad to miss, is actually, that's what it was. So, um, sun is now right behind me. Plenty of vitamin D I feel I'm taking on board today. Um, and it's good as well, um, because a short cruise or a bike ride or a stroll round town, it's not like cruising on the summer days where you're on the stern for like eight hours, because I feel like that's where you're gonna get your sunburn and, you know, yeah, it's potentially harmful effects, shall we say, from the sun. Um, so I don't mind a little short cruise. Um, in fact, on these days, I, I, I've gone off the idea of um, spending all day in the sun. Um, 
I did it a couple of times. You've got to do it now and again, you know, but I prefer to cruise in short tops if I can. So I'll, once I get onto the Weaver, which I will do in less than a week now, um, it will be interesting to see. Because the distances are longer between moorings. Uh, so I don't quite know how that's going to go. That'll be interesting. Potentially not in a good way. We shall see. Anyway, so nice leisurely cruise. I'm basically 1,000 RPM, which is very slightly above tick over. Uh, super relaxed pace. Um, I don't know why I bother, because no one slows down for me. Um, they all just carry on their normal speed. All the ones I've seen. But, uh, you know, I'm old school. I've only been on about two years. By the way. Um, so I'm not seeing all the Maybe it's not a good place for them. A good place for them. He's working on his hollow paint or something there. front deck like that you could get a bike on there you get a motorbike on there some people get motorbikes on it and they attach like a little one of those hoists you know those hoists uh, you know and uh, they can lift the bike on and off the towpath be a bit of a struggle in the in the really muddy stretches though sort of you'd, yeah anyway I'd still like one so so really, uh, I can only apologise for the brevity and the boringness of this uh, of today's cruise, really. Um, but you know, higher matters must uh, must take my uh, attention, and I've got to do this side of the boat because uh, I'm running out of time to prep the the hull. I've got a bit of a cunning plan. I don't know if it's going to work or not. We'll see how it goes. But the boat's getting uh, high pressure washed, and it really is, it's super high pressure, the thing they use. And um, once once they've done that, and they've got rid of all the gunk and everything off the side of the boat, uh, some of the blacking comes off of, with it as well, it's such a high pressure thing. It, it, would, it would cut your skin um, if you, um, you know, it, it, it could go through your skin, it's, it's incredibly high pressure. Anyway, um, so the cunning plan is that once that's been done and the side of the hull, the, the, the side, sorry, not the side, yeah, the sides of the hull, but also from the back, but below the waterline, because um, the boat by this time is um, in the dry dock. They let the water out and it settles onto some, what are they called? Planks? I think they're literally super thick wood blocks or planks. And then they pressure wash. So once they've done the pressure wash, my sort of the cunning plan is that I will go round with um, the um, wire brush scrapery thing and I'll get rid of any surface rust on that lower part. I can't get at it at the moment. I've, I've sort of done a bit on the upper part of the hull that's above the waterline, but this I'll get a chance to do the lower part of the hull. Um, I could probably stick a few revs on actually. Um, there's no point getting there late. Um, so, where was I? Uh, I'm just, do you know what I was thinking about then cooking dinner? Well, lunch. Sometimes it's lunch and dinner, that's the thing. If you go to all the trouble of spending 40 minutes to an hour, you know, doing some cookery, um, generally speaking, it's sort of two meals worth. If you do try and eat it in one go, you probably don't enjoy it. But the next hour, you're almost in a coma. So, um, yeah, lunch and uh, dinner, or tea, as uh, we both just say. So anyway, uh, so that's the cunning plan, is after they've pressure washed the hull, 
and got rid of all the rubbish um, I'm then going to give it a little bit of a go with um, a wire brush and maybe even a grinder with a flappy disc sandpaper to uh, if there's stubborn bits and I'll get rid of the excess rust before they come along the next morning and um, so it's going to be a bit of a pain really it's not going to be a pleasant job because I'll have about eight hours of daylight to do it because I'm going to say to them can you do the wash the pressure wash in the morning and I'll have all afternoon but you know it could be a super hot day um, and I also have got to wash it afterwards wash all the dust off because they you know you don't want a dusty surface when they're coming to paint it the next day so um, so we'll see how it goes really. Um, I'm going to do every everything above the waterline I'm going to prep where the blacken's going to go. So there shouldn't be any problem with that. But it's that below the waterline. I'll literally have one afternoon to sort that out, both sides of the boat. Uh, get rid of any excess rust that's appeared. And looking at above the waterline situation, there's only going to be more below the waterline because it's constantly immersed, isn't it? So I could have quite a, an afternoon and evening's work on my hands there. I really could. That could be the, the hardest day's work I've done in a long time. We shall see. I'm still only really a tick over. I want to get the spot that I was in. I want to get that same spot because the bank is at the right height. And it's a stone bank so it's great access. Um, it seems like it's a great spot and it's close to the bridge as well to the road for expeditions into town so I should be getting my foot down really because I want to try and get that spot back um, something sometimes you'll see things floating in the canal that you can't identify and you start speculating and you think no don't, don't even speculate the speculation is too unpleasant Right, there's a boat. So this is going to be a pain because there's a boat coming through the bridge hole ahead, right? Okay. This is going to be a bit of a nuisance here. There's a boat coming through the bridge hole ahead, right? He's so far away that I can't hang on where I am because I'm in a broad spot. So I've got to go forwards, but I'm going to go forwards so slowly that I'm hoping he will get to me and get past me before uh, we reach the line of moored boats. Because there's also a line of moored boats up there. So I'm in sort of tick over, literally tick over forwards. So I'm hoping, I'm, 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 I'm basically just hanging about minimal forward speed. My hope is he'll get past that line of moored boats and then... There we go, need a little bit of forward momentum. Rather than try and squeeze past him, alongside those boats, the moored boats, I'm going to sort of wait here in this stretch where there's a bit more space because it's yeah there's trees there's branches on this side and i don't want to go scraping along them um, so i'm just going to sort of stooge around a little bit minimal a bit of forward momentum uh, where you know where i start drifting when you start drifting, you go forwards. Give it a little bit of forward revs because you need some steerage weight. But I want hardly any. I want him to get to me and get past me because it's not just the moored boats on this side that there's massive branches sticking out into the canal. just sort of 
I'm almost hovering but I've got a teeny bit of forward speed Morning folks Yeah, I didn't want to get tangled in with those bushes sticking out from the bank up ahead on the right. Uh, with boats on the other side. So I sort of hung back there about 50 yards and just let these guys come through this stretch. It's just much less stressful. Now, it's fine if there's no boats behind you. If there are boats behind you who are keen to press on and who would just go ahead and find their way through. Um, that's a bit more of a problem. Um, it's fine if you're not being followed. So, uh, that's kind of it, really. Um, my, the bridge and my moorings, well, my moor, the mooring I want is just ahead, past the bridge up there. So it looks like I'll have no problem. Fingers crossed, going back where I was. Interesting is that you would imagine that'd be like a weekend boat wouldn't you? or a week away sort of on that one there there's the more like leisure boats aren't they? Um, this is a bit different this red one because there's coal on the roof. And there's someone in there. So there's a tea room inside the salt museum. Do you know something? There's a mooring on this side of the bridge. There are wings. Let's see, if my if my mooring's gone on the far side, I'll come back here. There's luck. No problem more in there. You do wonder if you might get a bump, someone coming through the tunnel and avoiding someone else and you know. More than anywhere near a bridge. I say a tunnel, I mean a bridge. More than anywhere near a bridge. It's you know too close. You always think to yourself there is that chance. Two people are gonna meet each other, one of them's gonna take avoiding action and it's all just gonna be a big kerfuffle. Uh that's definitely a thing. But I had a hell of a clobber the other day. Um, only had one, to be fair. Um, down by Anderson. I said the other day, yeah, about two weeks ago. Down by Anderson. Got a right clobber. Off of... Uh, I think it was a high boat. I didn't even see it because... Uh, I didn't have a shirt on at the time. By the time I, I you know got myself decent and got out they were well gone around the corner but it was a hell of a bank I'll get a look actually because it was on this side oh there's rings there Ooh. I didn't know there were rings there are rings here. but again you're quite close to the bridge and my little spot down there Still looks good. It's very quiet here at the moment. This 
three boats, right? And I think I live aboard. So they, they'll like stay for a week or two and then move on. Um, in fact, I met the guy off of this one, Brave New World, yesterday. And uh, he seems like a really nice fella, to be honest. Um, so they'll move on eventually, but it's gone really quiet. So I'm just deciding now where's my best place to moor. And I think, to be honest, it'll be exactly where it was. The internet's rubbish, I've got to say. The internet is terrible. Three, three sort of works. Um, is it three? E, E, sort of works. Um, BT, O2 it is, sorry, O2. Works a bit when I've got the mast up, but neither of them's brilliant. Right, so I'm just pulling in now. And uh, I'll get myself parked up. And uh, I can start on this side of the boat. There are some rings here, but where I am now, and I was more for a day or two here, but um, just no solar. The trees come right over the top, and there's minimal solar. So to get myself a bit of solar, I moved. I'm just going to pull in here and we can continue with the horrible, horrible job of treating the hull. It's uh, going to be done. So, over and out.